there are, however, also times where you kind of feel like you're watching a nicely done action movie and you're just occasionally prompted to press a button so you feel like you're sort of in the adventure. And this is only increased by how little impact you have on anything. You can't really turn, you don't always determine if you're gonna go fast or slow through an area. And other than the timing, it really isn't up to you whether or not you win. In other words, you'll pretty much just win. This is a very easy game. And I'm almost certain that there's only one difficulty to it. It doesn't start getting challenging until near the end. I mean, even the boss fights, for a while, they're just really easy. They're fun enough, though you're basically just waiting for an opening to attack, then you attack, and then you wait for another opening, etc. But yeah, very easy game. And I think part of it is because it's so short. It just does not have the time to increase in difficulty. And they didn't seem to be willing to offer you the opportunity to challenge yourself harder. There are a number of things that this kind of has gotten the inspiration from the new Prince of Persia trilogy. For example, there are stalactites... Stalagmites? Which ones are the ones going... Anyway, anyway, the icicles that point down, that start at the ceiling, that you jump onto and jump off, you can stick your sword into, well, here it's a wall, in those games it's banners, I think. In those games it's banners. And though here you can actually also climb up and side to side, that is still the first place I saw it, at least. There's also wall hugging and walking across dangerous ledges. There's something called the Soul Surge. This is easier to forgive because it does fit with Sonic. Anyway, it has you sort of speeding up, slowing down time sort of thing, and then you can sort of instantly attack enemies. And that's pretty similar to the slowing down of time in those games. Where it isn't similar is that if there aren't any enemies right nearby, you'll just speed through until you reach any enemies. There's even a little bit of jumping back and forth between steep hills. Now that in itself is kind of okay if you're gonna steal, steal from the best, you know? The problem is, when you do that, you're invariably gonna remind people of their experience with those games, and it was just better. Because Prince of Persia, new and old alike, have something that this game just does not have, and that's puzzles. Yes, both have stalagmites, stalactites, whatever, but only in the Prince of Persia games do you actually yourself have to turn as you can sense that it can't bear your weight, and you have to jump off before it drags you down. That's intense, that's awesome. As you can probably tell, I'm quite a fan. Here, yes, it's fun, but you quickly realize that you're not really doing that much. You're just pressing the right button at the right time. And the right button is almost always the A button. It's not a good thing if a portion of your game could potentially, theoretically, successfully be completed by the water-drinking bird. Another thing about the sword play that I really liked is that there's a kind of logic to it, meaning if you see your enemy standing like this, you know, with the sword ready to strike you, and you hit them as they're standing like that, you're gonna hit them, you know, and if they hold their shield out in front, you're gonna hit the shield, and if it's wooden, you can break it. I mean, I may be part of an insignificant minority, possibly of one, on this, but I like sword-playing games where it feels like sword-play, and you're not just button-mashing, or learning combinations, or using more powerful attacks to beat your enemies, where you can actually tell. That was another thing I liked about LEGO Star Wars, even though it forced every boss battle that had both sides having lightsabers into pure spamming matches. If you fight someone with a lightsaber, the lightsabers, you know, hit each other. The whole parry thing to me is just excellent. I love when it becomes a game of skill. Not just pure luck, not just being faster, being able to do it more times,
but timing and exploiting holes in the enemy's defense. Love that. There's something called grinding. No, no, no. It's not sexual. Sit back down, put the phone down. You don't have to call the ratings people. It's not what it sounds like. Okay? Okay. Basically, you're riding like a cable or rope or something, and all you can really do is jump and swing your sword. In theory, this is freaking awesome. You can have so much fun with that. Why they don't, I have no idea. Well, I suppose I do have one. It's because it always ends so fast. The game takes a relatively appropriate amount of time to get difficult. Appropriate if it were longer. In fact, in general, all the cool stunt stuff just ends before you really get a chance to get into it. I mean, I hate to say it, but the grinding was actually better when it was vine surfing in Tarzan, the licensed video game for Disney. Yes, I just said that. To be fair, that was a pretty cool feature in that otherwise average game. Now credit where credit is now credit where credit is due. I'm not usually much on you know, like visuals and such. It has to be really bad before it bothers me. But this game looks fantastic, and not just for the Wii. It really, really looks good. There are some fully animated CGI cutscenes, well, two anyway, and they also look amazing. The general storytelling is usually done in this graphic novel kind of style, but the in-game graphics, fantastic. The gameplay is pretty addictive, but it's also extremely you're running, jumping, fighting. That's it. It tries to vary the objectives of the numerous very short levels, but that's almost always what it comes right down to. The plot is pretty flat and predictable, and at the actual conclusion, note that there are technically two. Basically, if you haven't seen the credits roll after two separate boss battles, you haven't completed the entire game. Anyway, once you know the entire story, it kind of makes less sense the more you think about it. With the final boss fight, you finally get something different, and it's fairly memorable. There's pretty decent variety to the locations, even though several levels of them feel like they're basically the same. There's a village, a crystal cave, something called the Molten Mine, which has areas where you know lava shoots out. You go to Camelot, Avalon. The designs are quite nice, even if they do go a little bit nuts with neon in some of the enemy designs. And when I say a little bit nuts, I mean like not Joel Schumacher's Batman movies nuts about neon. Not quite that bad. Also, is it just me or are many of the enemies kind of similar to the monsters in TMNT, the animated movie and the licensed video game of it. I mean, have Sega always been such fanboys of Ubisoft? I mean, I get it, but still. The music is great. There's this really badass rock, heavy metal kind of thing for some boss battles and action and such. And then when it's a more idyllic and calm situation, there's this very soothing, medieval sounding score. There are RPG elements in this, although they're not all particularly developed. I don't know, is it just me, or are RPG elements making their way into many, many games today? I mean, isn't it kind of getting to the point where a game might not sell if you can't upgrade your abilities in between levels? Some of the elements are fairly well integrated. You pick up items, and you can't keep them all, and you have to, like, identify them, and then towards the end at least, you can have the blacksmith craft weapons and equipment out of the items that you find. And you can look up, like, see what you need to find in order to get specific ones made and such. Like I already said, it's very, very short. I beat this in two days, and if I hadn't taken any breaks, and I had the shoulder power of someone who you know, throws a ball at the Olympics, I maybe could have completed it in a day, at least almost. 
they're unlockables and it saves your stats so you can like beat levels faster than you did 